Star Wars is obviously one of those once-in-a-generation movies that comes around that has something for everyone. I mean, we all have our favorite things about Star Wars, like sunbathing with your stunt double. But one of the things that's overlooked is the outright blatant racism of the Star Wars movies. What? You haven't seen this? I mean, come on. I mean, you got an Imperial officer referring to uh, Chewbacca as an alien, as a thing. I mean, you know, if any person walked in and this was dialogue was in a regular movie, wouldn't it get red flagged? And look at the uh, bartender from the cantina. I mean, has anyone ever been more exclusionary to their customer base? I mean, you know, I know droids can't drink or anything. Well, the cantina bartender is a very beloved figure, or rather character, for Star Wars fans, despite being a five times winner of the Best Looking Star Wars Character Award, he is also filled with hate. Hate for droids! I mean, obviously, you know, he's not the only character in Star Wars that has a hatred towards robotic counterparts, and hey, you know, maybe one day we'll get the backstory and learn that his parents were killed by super battle droids, too. Kind of ironic that he wound up being replaced by a droid in the end, but uh, hey, you know, Star Wars is not without its irony, especially under the new Disney regime, where a lot of things have been kind of pushed aside to try to make the movie a little bit more politically correct, i.e. not referring to Leia as Slave Leia anymore. Now she's Hut Slayer Leia. So yes, that droid detector in the cantina that keeps certain patrons out? All right, well, that's still in. So, yeah, Star Wars Cantina, complete with its uh, anti-droid awards, awards, anti-droid rules, that's the word I was looking for. Well, it's produced some of the most memorable action figures we've ever had, simply because of the huge variety, and hey, aliens make great figures. But the Big Lebowski rug that brings all of the Cantina figures together in your display, of course, is the bartender, Werther. And he's had a few toys. Over the, the, the decades, yeah, we can say decades now, Star Wars is multiple decades old, and as cool as it is to get Lego figures or to get little Galactic Hero squishy figures, which I actually adore because there's nothing cooler than a super cute version of an angry, disgruntled barkeep, but getting this character in the 3 and 3 fourth series, the, the Vintage line, the Power of the Force 2 line, Whatever it's become, whatever it's called, it's all one giant inclusive line. See? Inclusion. And when it was announced that the very tail end of Power of the Force 2, the very last carded figure was going to be Wooer, Wooer, Woo Her, Woo Her, there we go, Woo Her, the bartender. Not a retail release, and a very good reason for that. So you could only get the bartender by uh, sending money to the Star Wars fan club, and they in turn sent you a carded figure. But I love when exclusive figures are released in the same format as retail figures, because, uh, what can I say, I like all my toys to kind of be homogenous and look like they're part of the same line. So it's really cool getting a figure on a legitimate card as if it was sold at retail. But, as I noted, there are legitimate reasons not to sell this character at retail, and one of them being the fact that, well, he's boring. I mean, for a kid who is the bulk of sales of any toy line or a gift giver, you see this guy sitting on shelf. I mean, it's, you know, a scruffy looking, angry, minimum wage bartender. And what does he come with? He comes with his absolutely anti-droid. Can you be racist against a droid? Because they are things. I don't know. But, you know, it brings up hatred. What can I say? Not to mention the fact that, oh, he's got a cup in his hand, which means he's serving drinks, which are probably alcoholic. Same thing as with the Simpsons Moe's Tavern, which was only sold at GameStop. It was not sold at mass retail. Because, yeah, selling toys that encourage drinking to children, not the best idea. But collectors want them, and it's great that creative solutions exist. And this character, of course, had quite a lot of screen time in the cantina, not just because, again, he's the Lebowski rug of the cantina, which, you know, bringing it all together, but the fact that he got to point out to Luke and order him to leave with his droids or, you know, flirt with the Tonica sisters or whatever else he was doing there, you know, he shows up on screen quite a bit, and having a complete cantina is very important to fans. He also had the advantage of actually being there on set, which most of the cantina aliens did not. You can see this best in all of the wide shots. This is what was actually being filmed the first time around, and when they were doing the pickup shots in order to get more aliens into the cantina, since George felt needed, you know, more, which I think we all agree. These were all done after the fact, with insert shots. So 
most of your collection of Star Wars Cantina figures were not actually there on the set. They were just done in post. But a Cantina display without a bartender ain't no Cantina display. And hey, we just got that awesome cardboard set, which we reviewed an uh, episode or so ago. So, as Power of the Force 2 ended and welcomed in the error of the Comtech Episode 1 feature to justify the increased price point and try to at least be something different on retail, hey, we got Wooher. Wooher? Wooher! Wooher! I know, go look it up on Wikipedia, nerds. Now, this is a figure a lot of us expected we'd even get in the original line, but again, a guy who is just a plain human in a very dull outfit doesn't really pop on shelf. Not to mention the fact that, again, he's serving non-alcoholic drinks. No, I, I'm pretty sure those were not non-alcoholic. Do they have alcohol in Star Wars? I mean, they have drugs. They talk about spice running. I don't know. It's crazy. Can you believe Disney owns a property all about drug running? I mean, Han was a drug runner. Okay, I'm totally off track. So, while we got the Power of the Force 2 figure, he hasn't been updated since. So, one sculpt, that's it. For a character that is really essential to any Star Wars cantina bar display serving lemonade? Let's just go with lemonade. Yeah, that's lemonade in that glass. Mmm, le let's see, defrosted lemonade. But he is absolutely considered a core Star Wars character because of this. And it's great that we finally got an action figure. And I think the distribution through the fan club was perfect. He did get a re-release, the sculpted at least, slightly modified. A few years later, we got the bartender with a section of the bar, and granted he comes with glasses, but now one is not fused to his hand, so I guess maybe this was acceptable to sell at retail. And this version was, well, dirtier. I mean, not dirty like, you know, bad, dirty like physically. They gave him what's called a wash, which is that paint job you see there to make him, I guess, more scruffy looking. Although, honestly, I prefer the original release. I think it's much better, and I love the fact that he's got a ring on a finger, and he's the only Star Wars figure in the entire line with something fused into his hand. How crazy is that? One figure out of thousands to have something actually sculpted into his hands. Something that the JLU line I worked at at Mattel, we took a big advantage of this for small accessories. So while fans are still waiting kind of for a vintage series re-release, maybe with increased articulation, heck, I think a lot of us would just love to see this figure slapped onto a vintage card because... You know, nothing says Star Wars more than an old, angry, minimum-wage barkeep who hates robots. I guess he probably never saw the after-school special. Don't date robots! <laughs>